What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Kid Taj. And as of now, right now, we only have six first round playoff series um, remaining. That is because we had two sweeps already. We had the Cavs and Pacers series end early with the Cavs taking four straight games, advancing on to the next round. And, of course, the Warriors, they beat the Trailblazers last night. I'm going to cover that game. I'm going to cover the three games from last night in this video and um at the very end of the video i'm gonna give predictions on the three games for tonight um and hopefully because like i make these predictions and yeah i've gotten three right before i've gotten all of them right before in a day i've gotten some wrong like i'm just trying to you know, test my basketball knowledge after each day i update my series predictions as well so um yeah we're gonna start with the first game of yesterday bucks in toronto this series was tied at two a piece and you know this was a very pivotal game five in toronto and this is a series that had been very up and down pretty much for both teams and I, th I thought that before this game the bucks had really had a better series than the raptors and this was just because the bucks getting two wins in games one and three you know they got those wins they they were statement wins they won by double digits they blew them out um both those games were blowouts not just like 10 point wins one of those games they won by like 14 or 15 but they were up 20 i believe in the fourth quarter and the other game they were up 30 in the second quarter and won by like 27 in the end that game was was just a ridiculous route um but so basically what i'm saying is these two teams they've been pretty even so far except Milwaukee has really been overall better, I would say. And in this game five, it's in Toronto. Um, they've alternated wins. So basically what I mean is Bucks got the first win. Raptors got the second win. Bucks got the third win. Raptors got fourth. So in the fifth, you know, I'm kind of expecting the Bucks to take it. I think I said in my video yesterday that, that, that I thought the Bucks would be taking game five. They didn't, okay? And they got blown to pieces in this game. They got beat by 25 points. It was it was the biggest win of the playoffs for Toronto so far. They're starting to look a lot like they did or in the regular season. They're really, I should say, they're starting to look a lot like what they're meant to look like, what this team was all about. And it's giving this team more hope, people like me, more hope that, hey, maybe this team could actually do something in the East. I'm not super confident just because of the way they started this series off and how, you know, they're, they're playing a game six. I mean, if you're playing a game six and you're supposed to be a championship contender and you're in the first round, Okay, maybe I don't know if the Raptors are supposed to be a championship contender, but at least they're supposed to be an East contender. And and look, if you're an East contender, you can't be spending six games at the least, you know, at in the first round against the Bucks. Um, and so they handled the Bucks in this game. They got 25 points from Norman Powell, the unlikely source. We're seeing some lineup changes in the playoffs this year when things don't work out. Taking a page out of Steve Kerr's book in that 2015 NBA Finals when he put Andre Iguodala in to play small against the Cavs and totally flipped the script. Basically, we've been seeing that a couple times with a bunch of different teams, and one of the biggest impacts that lineup changes have had, you know, throughout the playoffs was with the adjustment of Toronto Raptors moving Jonas Valanciunas to the bench and moving Norman Powell into the starting lineup. I mean, Norman Powell had the best game probably that he's ever had in the NBA in game five 25 points eight of 11 from the floor he hit four out of four three pointers grabbed four boards dished out four assists he stole it three times he was a plus 23 in 34 minutes he was absolutely marvelous and he's definitely going to be a starter on this team most likely for the rest of the playoffs unless he starts playing really bad um and you know they countered a, a, a real good game from Giannis Antetokounmpo who put up 30 points nine boards three assists three steals three blocks he was 12 of 19 Giannis went off in this game Malcolm Brogdon at 19 he was 7 of 11 he had five three-pointers Tony Snell hit three himself the, the Bucks got some good contributions but in the end the Bucks just couldn't stop the Raptors from scoring the basketball every single starter on the Toronto Raptors scored in double figures in this game Damari Carroll had 12 he got off to a hot start Serge Ibaka put in 19 on 8 of 10 shooting and Lowry and DeRozan you know they did their things. I mean, 16 points for Lowry and 18 for DeRozan. Not incredible numbers by any means, but the Raptors are doing what, you know, they should be. And if you guys don't know, the Raptors were the worst assisting team in the NBA in the regular season. Their biggest flaw is the fact that they don't move the ball enough. And in this game, they really did that. They got 10 assists from Lowry, 6 from DeRozan, 4 from Norman Powell. Their starters were just moving the ball around extremely well. Three more from Serge Ibaka. That's what you need. They got 23 assists in their starting lineup. Um, that's that's fantastic. 
And Kyle Lowry was a plus 29. You know he's one of the best players in the NBA when it comes to impacting your team positively. He does so many things well. Um, and the Raptors offense just worked. And and this is good because that you don't win in the playoffs with Hero Ball. You don't win in the playoffs with, you know, it, it, what the Raptors are trying to do is they try to just have Lowry and DeRozan switch off every possession, just give the ball back to each other so they can take their shots and, and make their plays basically. Um, and not get a lot of assists and just shoot a lot of shots and that's not a good playoff strategy You know, it'll maybe win some games off raw talent in the regular season But when it comes to the playoffs, they, they're gonna they're gonna game plan for that They're gonna game plan hard for it And so the Raptors they're finding a way around that and they're moving the ball around it and look at the result They dropped 118 in this game. They were phenomenal um, Including the fact that they shot 58% from the field in this game 44% from three that's just what happens. They had 28 assists. They were fantastic um, on that offensive end. And that's just what they need to do. I mean, they got to just keep doing what they're doing. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think either Raptors in six or seven. I'm going to go Raptors in in seven. Just because I think the Bucs can take one, take a game six. I think, I and game seven is going to be awesome. But I'm changing to uh, Raptors in seven for this series. Second game of the day was a game four. We had the Wizards in Atlanta. A 2-1 lead for the Wizards coming into this game, and I predicted a Hawks win from this. The Hawks got a big win in Game 3 at home after the Wizards started off 2-0 after winning their first two home games. The Atlanta Hawks struck again. We got seven players in double figures on this Hawks team, including Jose Calderon off the bench. He just had 10 points, 5 assists in 20 minutes, but he was plus 29 in that span. He was absolutely phenomenal in this game he subbed in for Dennis Schroeder and 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 he just he made great play after great play in this game he was really playing just leading I don't know I mean just the lineup with him they just played so much more inspired and that was great Paul Millsap 19 points nine boards seven assists two steals he was fantastic as well as Dwight Howard who had 16 points 15 boards Tim Hardaway Jr drop 15 as well and Kent Bazemore spark off the bench with 16 points seven assists I mean they got really good production from a lot of players that's what this Hawks team does and needs to do to win when they're finding success you know this is a very up and down team we've seen some some great games and some terrible games from this Atlanta Hawks team in order for them to win they got to get good production have a lot of players and and those players include rookie Torian Prince who's having just a great playoffs a starter something no one really saw coming but he's been fantastic as a two-way player he had 11 points in this game five of seven from the floor seven boards you know doing his thing he's an athletic body that can get to the basket but also play good defense and, and he really fits in with the lineups that Atlanta's trying to do in this game for the Wizards the only guy going was really Bradley Beal I mean we we saw last game that John Wall was the only guy going for the Wizards but this game it was Beal I mean Wall okay he had 22 points 10 assists but he was 7 to 19 you know six turnovers he he wasn't always on in this game the Wizards had a lot of up and down moments in this game and and you know in the ups John Wall was looking great but in the downs you know he just wasn't really there Bradley Beal was there the whole time and he was knocking down shot after shot 32 points five boards but but in the end of this game Atlanta had just taken this lead in the fourth quarter you know where it didn't it, they, there's nothing the Wizards could do I mean they, they needed shots after shots to go in but they couldn't really do that and get stops at the same time you know Bradley Beal scoring rampage wouldn't go on forever and it didn't okay he was 11 of 23 in this game um, and he had 32 points, but he didn't score a lot at the very end of this game, and, and that cost them. They didn't really have a source of scoring to finish off this game. The Hawks did. They dropped 34 in that final quarter. They finished it very strong, and I think that, you know, that's that's a huge component in winning games is what teams like the Hawks and the Raptors are doing. I mean, they're getting a lot of guys involved. The more guys you get in double figures, usually the better because you can get good balance scoring, which means everybody's rolling. Everybody's touching the ball. That's how a good team will function in this playoff atmosphere. The Wizards, they're not getting that. The supporting cast isn't there enough. Markeith Morris, just nine points on three of 10 in this game. Their bench didn't really give him much of anything besides Boyan Bogdanovich having 13. Um, you know, they, they weren't there enough. 
um, and Marcin Gortat with just two points in 35 minutes, it's not going to cut it. You're going to need more production out of him, especially for this team. And, and my prediction for this series now, I said Wizards in seven to start. And, and I said it. And, and look, I think it's going to be Wizards in seven. I think these teams are playing really good on their home floors. The Wizards are just a little bit better. The Hawks are playing great basketball right now. I, I can't say that like... This was going to be, this is a surprise to me, the Hawks won two at home. I mean, that seems pretty, pretty normal to me, just because the Atlanta Hawks will do that. They'll lose and look out of it, and then they'll come right back in it. And that's exactly what they did. So yeah, I'm saying Wizards in seven for the rest of this series. Now, game four, or excuse me, game three of, of, of yesterday, and it was game four of the series between the Warriors and the Blazers. Warriors leading 3-0 going into this game in Portland. <laughs> This was this was this was terrible. I mean, the Warriors started up off up 14-0, then they went up 22 to 3. I think they were up like 35 to 9. It just got so out of hand in the first quarter. They scored 45 points and after that, you know, they scored these teams scored about even for the rest of the game after the first quarter where they outscored them 45-22. They finished the game winning 128-103 each quarter after the first quarter was yeah like i said pretty even but that's just because like the warriors they're like okay we have this huge ass lead we don't need to do anything draymond green 33 minutes of play and he was plus 38 game high plus 38 that's absolutely phenomenal he had 21 points six boards four assists three blocks just doing draymond type stuff clay thompson was also plus 36 steph curry Dropped 37 points, 8 assists, 7 boards, 12 of 10 from the floor, 7 three-pointers made out of 11 for Curry in this one. In the first quarter, he was there, and after the first quarter, the Warriors, they just really didn't have to do anything. And Lillard actually finished his game with 34 points. He played 42 minutes um, to no avail. They couldn't get back in the game. The missing link for the Blazers in this game, well, first of all, Yusuf Nurkic didn't play, and, and also Kevin Durant came back this game. He only played 20 minutes. 10 points he was plus 25 and didn't really need to play after that because they're they're doing to kevin durant they're like okay well we don't need you right now so we'll just take you out for the rest of the game you know as opposed to draymond played 33 minutes and curry and thompson each played 30 Dray, uh kevin durant only played 20 you know they were like okay we don't even need him anymore we didn't even need him for this game we didn't even need to play in this game um and cj mccollum well, just played terrible. I'll get to that in a minute after I say Yusuf Nurkic didn't play in this game. After looking not great in game three, he decided to sit out in this game. Or I think that, you know, he's just still injured and it's just not safe for him to play at this point. Um, but yeah, CJ McCollum, just two for 12, six points. It's just such a bad way to go out in an elimination game like that. You know, when your back's against the wall, you need a W. It's, you're the guy that, that you're talking, you're talking a lot about how, you know, no one's gonna you're you're inspired you're you're you no one can guard you no one can check you um and and six points on two at 12 is just it's just come on man we they need more out of you for this game um fill in starter myers leonard didn't do anything he had zero points in 10 minutes uh, you know they, they would move on to noah vonley for the rest of this game pretty much um, Alf Rukaminu poured in 25 and 7 off the bench. He had a, he had a phenomenal game. Um, he was only minus 10 in 35 minutes, so Aminu didn't really play. And because because look, the Warriors only went off in this game in the beginning, and and then you know Aminu comes in, they lose a little bit more, but then they played even for the rest basically. And and you know he has a pretty good game. But look, when you get down that much, there's just against the Warriors, there's just not a lot you can do in that situation. I mean, they're really gonna keep pace with you, but they don't need to go hard enough for them to you know keep killing you they don't need to do that um and yeah this sets up the warriors for the next round and and really i predict the sweep this is this is this first series i got right the Cavs series i said Cavs in five they won in four the warriors said they win in four they won in four so i'm one for two so far um and the warriors they will be playing in the second round either the clippers or the jazz i predicted the clippers to beat the jazz but now i'm not exactly sure because rudy gobert came back so we might see the jazz get in there either way then the warriors are advancing if they play the clippers which was my predictions video i said i think i think they said they win in five games um and now without blake griffin do i will the, will the clippers even get one i i might have to change it to a sweep i mean really it, it doesn't look like the clippers and the clippers just suck against the warriors anyway so i don't know i don't know how that's gonna go now let's talk about tonight's games. This is the end part of the video here. I'm gonna predict 
all three games for tonight. First game is Oklahoma City in Houston. Game five. Houston leading 3-1 at home. I said in the beginning, OKC in six. But before that, I did say OKC would probably lose in four or five. And I'm going to go back to that. Just because the way they played, they've looked so lost without Russell Westbrook. It's absolutely unbelievable. They just, when you pull them out, there's nothing you can do. Um, I think that hurts them so much. They're in Houston. Houston, they look like they want to get out of this. It, I don't see how OKC can win. They just, they just don't have enough stamina i feel like because they'll they'll do great the last game two three and four they were so good in the first three quarters of the game and then the fourth quarter they just fall apart or maybe the four, first two quarters they'd always start out strong and then they just over time lose that lead houston has got they've got they got this constant sorts of offense they can just go to all game long whereas with okc you just need russell westbrook to be hot and getting guys involved you know those guys to make shots but it's just not consistent that's the problem and i think houston at home they're just going to be too much. Now, Memphis and San Antonio, a huge game five. These teams tied at two apiece. This is going to be crazy. It's a safe bet to say the Spurs winning this game, but I got to do it. They lost two in a row. They're coming back home, and they're in the first round. They're the Spurs, man. I mean, you can rely on them at least to get a game five win, a pivotal game five win here, I think. If they lose this, man, that's going to be that's going to be rough. The Grizzlies are looking really dangerous right now, too. So I expect this to be a close game, but I think that the Spurs... Because the Grizzlies are inspired. They know they, they found themselves. They know what they're doing. They, they know how to play the Spurs now. You know, the first two games, they looked a little lost. Now they look like they know what they're doing more. But I just think that the Spurs are going to come out on top. Maybe it will be a five or six point game. But, you know, that's still what I think. Now, game three of tonight is game five of the Utah Clippers series in L.A. You know, Blake, of course. Rudy's playing. Who do I think is winning this? I Man, this is tough. I think I'm going to go Utah. Gordon Hayward's back for this game, right? Because he left with food poisoning, but he should be back for this game. I haven't done my research, so if he's not back for this game, that's that's a problem. I don't. I think he'll be back. Um, so so barring that he's back, I'm gonna go Utah for Game Five. Maybe change that up a little bit. I think I'm gonna say Utah wins the series now, just because you got Rudy back and everything. Um, and yeah, it's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like comment what you think what you think about the video any disputes that you have with me um hit me up on twitter i'll argue with you on twitter i will i always respond to people on twitter don't really respond to people on here um but if you want to have a conversation hit me up subscribe if you're new and i'm out thanks for watching y'all